The first module for patient stabilization is oxygen therapy, right? This is one of the methods that we employ in the clinic and applies to small and large animals as well. So again, we do patient stabilization pre-operatively to make sure that um, their health status is better or at least fit to go into surgery. And that also affects the outcome of our surgical procedure. If they are going to develop any post-op infections, if they are going to um, regain function um, efficiently and in a much uh, shorter possible time than we um, than a disease would dictate them to. All right. So the first um, patient stabilization method is oxygen therapy. All right. So oxygen supplementation is indicated for all patients showing clinical signs of respiratory distress and hypoxia. All right, so we're going to encounter a lot of uh, medical terms that I am not sure you have encountered in other subjects. So I will be defining some of them right now. All right, hypoxia. This is the lack of adequate oxygen supply reaching the body tissues. Remember, the uh, one goal of uh, surgery is not just for us to conduct the surgical procedure, but while we are doing it and the patient is anesthetized, we have to make sure that um, oxygen is reaching the body tissues like a normal non-anesthetized animal would be able to uh, do, right? But since anesthesia, which we have another module for that as well, would have its own um, uh, cardiovascular effects to the animal, which causes um, depression of uh, heart rate, respiratory rate, and such. Um, we have to make sure that the perfusion is maintained during anesthesia. Okay, and the state of um, inadequate oxygen supply reaching the tissues is hypoxia. Right, but what is the difference between hypoventilation? and hypoxemia, all right? So again, medical terms. I, um, If you were my student in Fisher 2, we discussed this in detail, but then again, I'll repeat it for everyone, all right? Hypoventilation, all right, is, uh, is referring to the amount of carbon dioxide in uh, the blood, all right? That is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide while hypoxemia refers to the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. That's why it's hypo, low, oxy, uh, ox, which oxygen, emia is in the blood. So low oxygen in the blood. And um, the balance of ventilation and perfusion, the amount of air going in to the lungs and the amount of blood going into the lungs for that uh, gas exchange is very important to maintain perfusion for the body, right? That's just, that is why we maintain um, a proper heart rate. We maintain a proper ventilation rate for anesthetized animals because we have to make sure that this process is not um, stopped or uh, dysfunctional in any way. Right. So how do we know? How do we know if our patients are showing signs of um, these conditions? Right. These are just some of them. Dyspnea would be difficulty in breathing, which could be brought about by a lot of things. Um, there could be obstruction um, within the respiratory tract, in the upper respiratory tract, or within the, um, the naris, which is very common for some breeds of dogs. Tachypnea is elevated respiratory rate. So when we say tachypnea, um, mataas yung respiratory rate, pero shallow yung respiratory depth. All right? Mababaw lang. I think we discussed this earlier. Cyanosis, a uh, bluish discoloration of the body tissues, basically the mucous membranes, um, initially due to low oxygen saturation of the tissues. Right? Remember, what makes the blood red? That's the heme protein of the hemoglobin. And the heme protein would be binding, uh, would have an iron binding the oxygen. If without the oxygen, it will be in a different uh, conformation that is called methemoglobin. And that is, um, that's what's causing that bluish discoloration. Apnea, ah, 
apnea, <laughs> all right? Um, basically, walang respiratory activity. The the patient is not breathing, all right? And the thing is, cyanosis. Going back, can be seen um, only if the patient has severe, severe, severe hypoxemia already, all right? Postural changes could be um, a sign of uh, low oxygen saturation of the brain because there's incoordination already, anxiety, of course, because they would be grasping for air, and um, there could be, there or there could not be depression of the central nervous system, all right? So how do we know this? What is the vital sign that we can rely on to tell us if there is good perfusion? The basic one is oxygen saturation or SpO2, which is, um, and it would, the normal would be 95 and up, 95 to 100%, meaning 95 to 100% of the tissues in the body are receiving oxygen. If this is dipping down below 95, then we have a problem. All right. So how do we um, supplement oxygen? What are the ways that we can give oxygen to an animal? All right. The method that we use would depend on a lot of things. All right. Namely, the level of need for oxygen. Um, the tolerance of the patient with the method that we are employing, the duration of therapy, gano ba katagal kailangan natin siyang bigyan ng oxygen until it can breathe on its own and it can ventilate on its own. The available equipment, of course, would be a very um, important limiting factor, staff handling, and clinical experience because some of the methods would require technical expertise for it to be um applied to the animal all right so what are these methods from the easiest one to the most technical one we have the hood flow by oxygen oxygen mask oxygen cage nasal oxygen and the most technical would be intubation and mechanical ventilation let's go at it one by one all right flow by oxygen is um i believe would be the most um available for any clinic that we have because all you need is a tank right all you need is an oxygen tank and you need a tube connecting the tank to the patient all right and what you do is that this oxygen supply tubing right is just held near the patient's nostrils or mouth all right so flow by oxygen they need direct mo lang yung source of oxygen towards the animal all right and it's up to them how they will breathe uh, to that Okay. The oxygen flow rate is 2 to 5 liters per minute. Oxygen tanks would have a flow meter attached to it so that you could regulate how much oxygen is going out of the tube per minute. And oxygen concentration that goes into the body of the animal is, of course, very variable and it's quite low as compared to the other methods. It is only 25 to 40 percent, which you can, uh, you can, this is commonsensical because um, much of the oxygen is released into the environment and not concentrated to be administered into the patient. All right. So hindi naman yan sinusungalngal sa pasyente. All right. The tubing is held within two centimeters from the patient's nostrils. All right. And if you um, increase the flow rate, you know, to for with an effort to increase the oxygen concentration, that will actually just cause distress to your animal because just imagine. Um, having a balloon in front of you and then you deflate it and you have this rush of air continually you know in uh, hitting your face that actually causes distress to the animal as well and might um in uh what do you call it? Di um disrupt your um goal of supplementing oxygen right this is fairly non-stressful for the patient if done correctly um what is uh the disadvantage of this is that um, it requires the tubing to be held in place. So you need a person who is dedicated to just hold this tube in place for an animal. So this is suited for those who are not moving, who are um, quite recumbent, and you do not have any other more invasive method of oxygen supplementation available. Um, 
And also, this makes it ineffective in mobile patients because you have to move with them, and they will, um, and that will actually decrease the level of oxygen they are receiving because they they're moving all the time, right? So another way to give oxygen would be the oxygen mask, right? This is more concentrated, of course. The head or the muzzle depends on the size of the animal and depends on the animal species itself. Um, this would fit into a snug-fitting mask, which is connected to the tubing that is connected to your tank, right? So you can increase uh, your flow rate with this, 8 to 12 liters per minute, um, because there's this big surface area wherein the oxygen can concentrate itself within the mask. So there is also higher oxygen concentration, all right? So um, again, this is ineffective in mobile patients unless you can secure that mask and you cannot actually secure that mask to any patient, all right? Um, and if you persistently attempt on placing the head or the muzzle inside a mask of a patient who is um, clearly in distress, right? This will only increase the stress of the animal and might worsen the existing respiratory distress, all right? So as you can see here, um, this would benefit patients who, uh, who need oxygen acutely who are quite, uh, quite more stable than other ones. Um, masks can be available uh, with this rubber stopper that fits into the muzzle of the animal and that is interchangeable. But they, um, when you buy a mask which is dedicated for veterinary use, you will receive this uh, rubber, the black one, of varying sizes of the hole para um, depende. Isa lang yung size ng mask, pero depende dun sa size ng muzzle ng patient yung ibibigay mo so that you could actually snug the muzzle into it and that uh, oxygen will not be um, will not escape from the mask itself right and also still um, masks with, without the rubber stopper are available right so again um, this has its disadvantages it's hard when your patient is moving and what if it needs continual support for oxygen the oxygen hood is a good alternative for that. So how is this done? Um, there are available oxygen hoods talaga. Okay? But most of the time, this is made through you know a bunch of resources that we already have. You just need your oxygen tubing. You insert it into, the, uh, into an Elizabethan collar. And that Elizabethan collar is covered with a plastic wrap with a small hole. All right? And that small hole could be at the top, it could be below, but I'll discuss why there should be a hole in it, all right? The oxygen flow rate here doesn't need to be that high, but can reach um, a good level of concentration of 30 to 40 percent. And this is good when your patient is actually moving, okay? Because you do not have to, you do not have to dedicate a person to hold the mask, to hold the tube, and and guide the animal towards the oxygen source because you can just leave it, leave them in their cages with the hood. And also, the clear plastic wrap or whatever you're covering the Elizabethan collar with um, makes the patient visible for an easier assessment and without that much handling necessary, right? So um, not all patients, of course, will tolerate this method. Some of them would want to remove the color but it is effective for oxygen delivery especially if you do not have an oxygen cage which is the best and easiest method of oxygen supplementation all right so as you can see here look at this little baby okay you have an elizabethan collar they have this uh clear plastic wrap right and there's a hole hindi siya completely covered by the plastic wrap as you can see there why when you breathe you excrete heat right mainit and if you completely wrap the elizabethan uh, collar or the hood uh, without um, a small hole for the the heat to be released mamumuo lang yun dun sa loob ng hood and where the head is, that will actually worsen the respiratory condition of your patient, all right? So again, um, 
the the sizes of the hole can be variable depending on the veterinarian you actually uh, work with but um the the necessity of placing that hole has been explained all right oxygen cage is the best method for it uh, easiest method as well because these are sealed individual cages supplied with oxygen through a hole right basically you have the oxygen supplied with a tube and it's connected inside a cage and this one um, gives you 80 to 90 percent o2 concentration all right and what's great with this you do not have to handle any animal which are clearly severely respiratory distressed especially with cats we're in when you move them right when they clearly need oxygen especially for patients with cardiac problems respiratory problems with uh, pleural effusions and such um, you just need them to be stabilized and be placed in a cage without any handling to be done um, and that uh, helps them completely it, it helps them really fast and this also allows good observation of animals while inside a cage because you can you can imagine how much work um, is required for that oxygen hood all right sometimes you have to do it uh, you, you don't have anything that is ready-made just to be placed on the animal, right? That's why you have flow by oxygen, mask, you know. But the best one um, would be an oxygen cage, all right? Opening of this cage door would drop the O2 concentration to room air level immediately. It may be the easiest method because you just place them in there. But it, of course, it is the most expensive as well. Not just to buy, but to maintain. Because you have to um, uh, routinely and regularly maintain the oxygen level, the humidity level inside. Kung namumuo yung heat inside the hood, you can also imagine the heat inside the cage. So what we do with that is there is an exhaust there that works to remove the heat. And also we place ice packs inside. All right, And when we handle cardiac patients um, with uh a variety of, of conditions. Some would have a um, pulmonary thromboembolism, some would have a mitral valve degeneration, and just congestive heart failure. You do not want to move them or to handle them or to do your physical exam too much because being out, when you remove them from the oxygen cage, they suddenly become unstable. So this is where you just um, need to place them talaga right and of course the effectiveness of the cage to supply oxygen would highly depend on the animal's body size right i don't know if there's a ratio for it um some would uh, say the body surface area should be one is to ten of the room surface area um that is um uh, a good um called this space for them because you do not want to put a very big animal in a cage that nasakto lang yung size niya because the there is no room for the oxygen to actually concentrate inside the room right so um you might need to consider other oxygen supplementation methods for bigger animals when you do not have big oxygen cages right um, risk of hyperthermia is high inside a cage that's why we put ice packs so for those patients who you cannot uh, place inside a cage if you have cages only for small dogs and cats the option for those big dogs would be the nasal oxygen right very easily done very effective as well and um, you can use either the human nasal prongs yung nilalagay kapag may sakit you know, remember the, the Teles area that you, if you watch those, um, they suck though. But, uh, you know, that the human nasal prongs where you just put it into your external nostrils and oxygen will go through. You can use that. Or, um, since they are very commonly dislodged by the animals, you can um, prefer to use a red rubber catheters like this one in the picture which is secured into one or both nostrils. Depende kung gaano ka, kataas na level ng oxygen ang kailangan ng pasyente mo. Right? Again, since this is 
um, administering oxygen directly into the nasal cavity of the animal. This should be less, right? 100, 200 ml per kilo per minute. Um, O2, 60 to 80, still lower than oxygen cage, but better than flow by and mask, right? This is indicated for prolonged oxygen supplementation, okay? Meaning if you expect your animal to be inside your clinic for a while, right and they would need oxygen this is the way to go because you can secure it to the animal and you can keep it there while they are confined okay and this is very good for patients who are actively moving um, some patients require walking for them to pull or to pee you can um, this gives you a, a big flexibility of giving oxygen while they are actually moving However, this is not indicated for brachycephalic breeds because they have short noses. <laughs> you basically cannot place the nasal catheter inside and they have the tendency to mouth breathe, right? They tend to use their mouths more in breathing as compared to their nostrils because as uh, if you remember the first lecture that we had uh, brachycephalic breeds we do rhinoplasty for them to enlarge the external naris to um, enable more air to go in so we don't do that routinely for patients you know and there's a lot of brachycephalic breeds in the philippines so um, nasal, ox uh, nasal oxygen is not really good for them because they tend to rely on opening their mouths to breathe. So even if you put a nasal catheter in them, if you are successful with that, um, it doesn't mean that it will work. All right? So how do we do this? How do we um, place nasal catheters? All right? What you, need, uh, what you need are these instruments, silicone catheters or red rubber catheters of variable sizes. Sizes of catheters are in a French um, unit of measurement, right? 5 French, 10 French, 12 French, right? Don't ask me how they figured that out, they just threw, right? Well, uh, topical lidocaine, you need this to desensitize the nasal cavity to make it easier for you to place the catheter. Suture material, a needle, if you don't have suture instruments, and e collar and adhesive, right? So how do we do this? Step by step. Um, a, vari a variety of sizes can be used depending on the size of the patient. Five, um, a lower size would be a lower, um, a narrower diameter of the catheter. So five French is narrower than a 10 French. And this is pre-measured from the nostril to the medial canthus of the eye. Right? This is very important. This is very important. Um, wh when you pre-measure that, you could mark the end that is outside the... Uh, you can mark here for the uh, with a pencil pen. Para alam mo kung gano kalayu mo lang dapat ipasok yung catheter. Why? Okay? Because that is actually where the turbinates are very well developed. <laughs> All right? <laughs> and that actually is, is good for uh, oxygen, uh, to receive oxygen. If you put it too far, again, if you put it too far, um, that'll be bad. Why? Right? You will basically just reach the laryngopharynx and the oropharynx, and there's a big possibility that whatever oxygen that you put in there will be exhaled right back. Right? So, mas maganda na nandun lang. And the turbinates, even if it's not that much developed, in dogs as compared to horses, they can uh, cause bleeding if you penetrate it too much, right? So um, this is done for patients, um, sorry, ideally they are sedated, but if you cannot, okay, but if, because they would, they would struggle and when they struggle, they would find it hard to breathe, harder to breathe. So you could uh, sedate them just a little bit, low dose of sedative, um, and uh, place, uh, instill a local anesthetic drops in the nostril. Again, lidocaine does not work instantly. You have to wait for it to work. And that is usually three to five minutes before onset is seen, right? So what you do is you gently elevate the patient's head. Uh, you lubricate the tip of the catheter into the nostril and you advance it, advance it until you reach that pre-measured part. 
right? If you feel any resistance, which might indicate that you are hitting the turbinates, um, withdraw and then redirect to prevent trauma. You do not want your patient to suffer from nosebleeds, which is iatrogenic or because of what you did um, to worsen the problem that it already has. Right. Once you have um, placed it in the pre-measured level, you can confirm it with a lateral head radiograph if you used a catheter which is radiopaque or it can be seen uh, in the, with the x-ray. But if you're confident with the pre-measurement method, then no need for x-ray. Um, the, this one is a wire guide, a uh, guide wire, sorry. It's a guide wire, meaning sa loob ng catheter may wire to, 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 um, how do I say it? Make it easier for you to direct the catheter where you need to go. Kaya siya guide wire. It guides the catheter, right? This one is an endotracheal tube. Don't confuse it with the intranasal catheter, which is there, right? So, how do you secure it? Again, this is a good option for those patients who, which are mobile. You can secure it on the lateral sides of the face. Okay, you can. Uh, this, uh, this is where they use the human nasal prongs, right? They have uh, they wrap the tape on one side and wrap the other side, so that actually constricts or squeezes the area towards the nose which secures the the prongs or for the catheter you can actually suture it see this this you can suture it to the um skin of the patient right with that all right now one thing that you need to remember about nasal oxygens and even oxygen cages the oxygen that you are delivering is to be humidified all right, oxygen gas needs to be bound with water vapor to prevent um, when it contacts the uh, the mucous membranes of the nasal the nasal membranes. It will not desiccate any part of the airway. And if you give just pure oxygen gas, that actually predisposes the animal to oxygen toxicity. All right, as you can see here. This one, this is the tube where the uh, it's connected to the oxygen tank here, goes here. And this is just distilled water and the oxygen that goes into the patient is humidified through this method, All right? So, quite um, unstable and it needs ventilation. It needs for you to breathe for it. That is uh, endotracheal intubation. We have, I will discuss how to do this in, with anesthesia, with general anesthesia. Um, and this is indicated in cases of severe respiratory distress or upper airway obstruction, meaning the patient doesn't have anything wrong in this area, right? Yeah, the lungs are fine, but there could be an obstruction right here that stops it from breathing breathing or stops the air from going in and going out so endotracheal tube can be very advantageous for that and this is the only method that supplies 100 percent oxygen concentration into the animal all right the endotracheal tube will pass from the mouth to the trachea it will not reach the lungs that's why it's called endotracheal tube right and this facilitates connection of the patient to mechanical ventilation Okay, when it um, when it cannot breathe for itself, and the thing is, when they are intubated because their ventilation is entirely on your hands, you need to supervise them, and they have to be monitored constantly. Right? You're you're going to monitor them the same way that you are monitoring patients who are anesthetized. Monitor the heart rate, respiratory rate, mucous membranes, CRT, oxygen saturation to make sure that the, ventil uh, the ventilatory support that you are applying to the patient is actually working. Right? Remember, these are patients who cannot breathe, right? who cannot breathe on their own. Some patients are alive, they have a heart rate, but they cannot breathe. So that's why you give ventilatory support. You can do this via machine right 
mechanical ventilation machines quite expensive or what we do commonly in the philippines is that uh um you connect you connect it to a manual resuscitator the ambu bag especially if you're just resuscitating or um if the patient needs continual ventilatory support you do not have a ventilation machine or a ventilator you connect it to a ga you connect it to a gas anesthesia machine turn off the anesthesia turn on the oxygen and breathe for the animal using the anesthetic bag right so um long-term ventilation is highly associated with lung damage that's why patients who um the owners of the patients who opt for their pets to be mechanically ventilated, um, we tell them the truth that there is very low possibility for this patient to wake up. Right? It goes the same way with humans who are put on a ventilator, uh, especially right now that's quite um, a relevant thing because of COVID and a lot of these patients suffer from severe respiratory distress and they need to be put into a ventilator and not everyone can be um, removed from the ventilator. Not everyone can regain the function of their lungs and that's why a lot of uh, people succumb to COVID-19. Right? That is it for the first module of um sorry for the first part of the third module of patient stabilization techniques thank you for listening the next video is on fluid therapy get your calculators ready because we are about to do some computations thank you and see you in the next lecture